What's going on guys? In this video we're going to discuss how scheduling processes uh, works on Linux. So if you've got some program script thing you need to run at some point in the future, whether it's repeating like every Friday at this time, or whether it's a one-time thing like on June 22nd, you can schedule it using Cron. It's a scheduler. It's very simple and we're just going to dive right in. I'm going to basically cover 90% of what you'll ever want to know about it, and the other 10% are very easy to Google for those strange cases where you're actually going to need it, um, like extra options and stranger syntax. So let's dive right in. Each user has what's, what's known as that user's cron tab, which is short for the cron table. It's the table of scheduled processes that you want to schedule in the future. You can list your cron tab by saying cron tab, L. You can see I don't have a cron tab yet. So to edit a cron tab, we're just going to replace that L with an E for edit. Um, if you're running this for the first time, you may need to set up your default editor, so whether that's VI or Nano or what have you. And you can see this basically gives you the explanation already, but I'm just going to paste a slightly modified one in just to give you a little bit of an example. So as you can see, you've basically got six fields here. The first field is the minute that the job should run at. The second field is here, so minute 15 of hour 10. This is on a 24 hour clock, right? So it keeps counting at 12 all the way up to 24, which is midnight. It would be zero again. So at 10.15 in the morning, every day of the month, so this is something that would run daily. That's the star glob character. Generally, this means every possible value month of the year, so you can specify which month you want it to run on, 1 to, 1 to 12. Weekday, 1 to 5, so that's 1 being Monday, 5 being Friday. Oh, yeah, 1 to 5. <laughs> How about 1 to 7? <laughs> uh, that would be uh, Monday to Sunday, of course. And then uh, the command itself, and this command is interpreted by SH, the most basic shell on your system probably. Uh, if you're on FreeBSD, or any of the BSDs actually have much more advanced shells, I think, as the default SH. But on Linux, this will generally be uh, a very simple shell that doesn't have that many features. So if you want to do something truly fancy, you may want to specify the shell uh, that you want to run. This is a very simple command. We're going to echo something with that has output to a file. And in that, we're just going to have a, a timestamp, really, that we write to that file. Now this actually won't work because to write to var log actually need to be root. So I've commented this out because this is the cron tab for my current user. But let's say we do want this. What we'll do is I'm going to set the white space is ignored here. So every minute, every hour, every day, every month, every weekday, uh, we want to run the command hi there to, and we're going to append it and not overwrite, to home dave hi there dot txt. We'll just call it that. Now we're going to save this. Ah, bad minute. Why is that bad minute? <laughs> not as bright as I like to think I am. So that should work now. <laughs> so cron automatically sees that there's a new cron tab for this user and it automatically pulls that into the cron tabs that it will check and schedule for. User cron tabs, like I'm uh, Dave right now, user cron tabs are kept in, I think it's, let's see, var spool cron, I think. Yeah, var spool cron cron tabs. Get a, so you can see this has one cron tab, uh, and if we just take a quick look in there, we'll see, oops, numlock, come on, man. You will see the file that we just edited. So that's where they're kept. Var, spool, cron, cron tabs, and then one for each user. Now, there's another place where these are kept, um, and that is cron d. Etsy cron dot d is a place for packages that you install, so software packages that you install. In this case, we have PHP running here, but that's about it. For packages to install package-specific scheduled jobs so that they don't pollute a user's file or, you know, so that every package keeps it somewhere else it can be kind of annoying. So it's sort of just a standard place to keep program-specific cron tabs. 
Okay, so we've seen our cron tab, so we've edited it. Now you can see our live cron tab. You know where that is on the file system. Now let's see if the high there has been created, and let's see how many minutes it's been. So it's been about two minutes since we created that cron tab, and it's echoed in there twice. Now we might want to do something a little bit more complicated. Um, so why don't we use that command? We'll just edit this cron tab again. Uh, by the way, there is a system-wide cron tab as well, and that is in etc. There it is. So let's see if this exists. Yes. Yeah, so this is the system-wide cron tab, and this actually has an extra field where you can specify the user. You can see this field did not exist in our so if I just, as Dave, say cron tab E, you can see there's only six fields. Month, uh, minute, hour, day, month, weekday, and the command. Well, here we've got a seventh, and that is the user. So you can, as root, create jobs that run as a specific user, which can be useful if, let's say, only certain users, certain users own files and directories, and you want to make sure that the run is an unprivileged user and a specific user, this is where you would put them. So let's talk about slightly more advanced syntax. And that is, all right, what do we have here? This is uh, looking pretty strange, right? So let's go through it one field at a time. So we've got the minute here, hour. So again, 1015, like in the first example. Now here we have a range, 1 to 10, so that means days of the month, 1 to 10. Slash implies a recurring thing, so every 2. So you say, on days of the month, 1 to 10, every 2 days, so it would be the 1, 3, 5, and so on, every month, and on Fridays. What happens here is the day of the week, this is sort of greedy. So day of the week and day of the month go together, and it basically chooses when one of these is true, so when it's one of the days here, so days 1 to 10 every second day, and even when this isn't true, every day 5 of the week, so every Friday, it will run this echo command, again, just appending the date to some log file. Now this is an etc cron tab, Let's see cron tab, so it's going to be run as root. It can be run as an arbitrary user, but since we're running it as root, as you can see, we can write into a file in var log. So most of the time, you're just going to be using normal integers here. I mean, there's almost nothing you're going to have to schedule through cron on days one to ten of every month, every second day. This stuff is like, I don't want to confuse you too much. So most of the time, it's going to be looking like this. Usually, you will have a time, maybe a weekday. Um, you can also make lists of weekdays, uh, so you can say uh, 1, 2, 3, and 7 is Monday. Oops, that's uh, day of the month. So this will run at 10.15 in the morning on every 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 7th day of the month, every month of the year, and also on Fridays every month of the year at this time. So it's like these month days and this weekday. This is greedy, so these things come together. So so a misconception is like, if you also specify, um, you know, an additional thing like weekday, this will further constrain the times at which your program's going to be running. It's not true. So this will be when it's a Friday or when it's the first, second, third, and seventh of the month, this thing will run. Okay. So that covers some weird stuff like commas and slashes. So commas being a list and slashes being every whatever follows basic times, star, uh, that's pretty much all you're going to need to know. And again, for most users, what you're going to have is simply cron tab L and cron tab E to list out and to edit your cron table. If the file etc cron allow exists, this will be basically a whitelist. So if users aren't in here, then they won't be able to create a cron tab. That's generally not the default on any system. So if you want to basically lock down cron, if you're running services and you don't want somebody to break in and then use the process, uh, the user that that process is running under to install malicious cron tabs so that every time you clean out the malware they install, it automatically 
has a cron job to go out and fetch the malware again, you know, at like 11 p.m. every night. These bad guys are clever. So there you go. That's how you lock down cron. You just create this file. You can also do blacklisting, which is a terrible idea in almost every situation by having a cron.deny file in the same location. If you are root, and this is the last thing we will cover, I am sorry. If you're root, you can edit a user's cron tab, specifically if for some reason you don't want, you know, if you're not adding a job that's going to be run as that user in etc cron tab, which is the system-wide cron tab. If you want to edit a specific user cron tab, you can just say, I'm going to edit this user's cron tab. So if Dave has done something, oh, whoops, so sorry. So it's cron tab edit, so dash E, dash U for the user, and then the username. That's kind of strange, eh? Like that was different. And there you see the cron job that I created that's probably still echoing. So obviously if some you know some user was real smart and created some kind of cron job that's like locking down or totally saturating your IO or your network or what have you. Um, you can go in as root and edit that cron tab. Specifically it is not recommended to go into var spool cron cron tabs and edit anything directly there because you have this way of doing it. Okay, that pretty much covers everything you need to know about scheduling processes in Linux. Okay, that's cron in a nutshell. Enjoy. I'm gonna log out of root here and we're gonna cat out our, what is it called again? Hi there. File again. Lovely. Uh, it's a lot longer than five minutes, I guess. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so now you know what you need to know about cron. Go schedule some stuff. Play around with this. If this has been useful, make sure to upvote, comment if you've got questions, and subscribe to the channel because there's a lot more interesting stuff brewing in the very near future. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you in the next one.